You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nara here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections Quinn's Path. So, the last place we left off was we were gearing up to go on the camping trip, and of course, Jude noticed Quinn's black eye and had to inquire about it. But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let's pick up right where we left off and let's jump right into it, shall we? Alarm Chen, you are up. Alright, let's do it. <clears throat> I parked just over there. Elliot points at a gray compact pickup truck parked across the street. It looks fairly clean, perhaps freshly washed. However, I can tell it's seen some rougher roads from the dents on the lower sections of the vehicle. I hope that isn't indicative of how Elliot drives, and it was like this when he bought it. So, Mason, you sitting up front with me or in the back with you? Why are you asking me? And why am I automatically in the back? Well, Jude, you're in the back because you need more leg space, so you can really only sit behind Quitter Mason. I don't really have a preference, so long as we get going soon. I guess they're leaving the decision up to me. Uh, we'll sit in the back. I'll sit in the back. I think I'll sit in the back. It's the safest part of the car, anyway. What are you worried about? We'll get into an accident? With the way you drive, that's probably not the worst idea anyone's ever had. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's just get going. Elliot pouts, but eventually gives up on insisting he's a skilled driver. We get loaded into his truck and begin our road trip. The first 30 minutes of the ride to the camping site proves to be very uneventful. Everyone ma everyone makes idle chit-chat while, while I don't say much, instead opting to do research on my phone for my paper. I was at least able to settle on a topic that made sense to me. It just made sense. I'm gay, and it's a topical issue that never stops being topical. You know, Mason, you're being awfully quiet. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to save some links for some articles for a paper I'm working on. Jeez, you're already working on that? What paper? Our instructor gave us this bogus essay to work on over the weekend on a major political or social issue. I figured I'd write mine on the fight for gay rights. I see, that would make sense. Did you have any particular subjects you hope to tackle? Marriage, kids, maybe representation? I hadn't, I hadn't gotten that far yet. It's only a five-page paper, so I won't be able to cover everything. At least you've got a topic. I still don't have a clue what to write about. There are tons of issues worth tackling. Healthcare, the election process. There are tons of issues in our judicial process and law enforcement. I guess. I'll just pick something that I can stretch for five pages. Might as well. Not like a short essay is going to fix the world anyway. You never know. You could change a lot of minds with the right arguments. Quinn shrugs at this while Jude simply shakes his head. I thought Elliot was right, even if I still think our little papers were unlikely to amount to anything. Eventually, the car ride settles into an awkward silence, which provides me with another opportunity to continue research for my paper. Grabbing hold of my phone once more, I'm shocked by a sudden vibration. I'd say I'm surprised to see a notification from Zoe, but it's not as if many people text me outside of, in the, of the individuals in this car. Hey, what's your ETA? Uh, ten minutes, maybe? I thought you were keeping your phone off. I was, but Aiden keeps getting antsy. Too much dirt, so he keeps wigging out. Lol. We're almost there. How's Jude? I think he's good. Yeah, he's in a good mood. How'd he react to your roommate hitting your eye? So we Elliot's in this chat, too. Oh, don't worry, I already told him. Would have been too complicated to balance that secret in Operation Friendship. I think Quinn wanted a heads up. Well, heads up, I'm going to turn my phone off again. One of us has to save our battery in case of an emergency. As much as I hate to admit it, she makes a good point. I should probably cram all my work into Saturday into Sunday and save my battery. I've already settled on a topic, so it should be pretty easy to get something together. Quinn said we're about ten minutes out. How should I pass the time? Sorry, conversation. Okay. So, uh, what's a dentist's favorite time of day? Uh... 2.30! Quinn practically starts jumping in his seat while Jude just groans. You've really done it now! Why couldn't the sesame seed leave the poker table? He was on a roll! God, no. How do you put a baby alien to sleep? You rock it! This continues for several minutes, non-stop. God, I love Quinn. Apparently Quinn has a pun button. Once pressed, the rabbit goes into a long, terrible joke frenzy. Please stop. Okay, okay, last one. 
How do trees use the internet? How? They just log in! I can feel a powerful cringe coming on, ripping its way through my entire being. That pun was particularly bad. Desperate to change the conversation, I say the first thing on my mind. So, uh, Elliot, who's running the cafe while you're out? One of my baristas. I'm choosing to believe that nothing will go wrong this weekend. I'll be calling and checking in with him every hour or so, so that should be fine. Yeah, until Jamie trips into something and pours hot coffee on somebody again. Well, hopefully that won't happen this time. Elliot grips the wheel tightly. Clearly he isn't convinced by the words coming out of his mouth. Maybe I shouldn't have come. What? No! Jesus being a butt. This shouldn't have to this shouldn't have been with this the same with it. This wouldn't have been the same without you, Elliot. It wouldn't have felt right unless all six of us were there. Mason included. Oh shit. Six of us? It was at that moment that Quinn must have known. He just made a terrible mistake. Motherfucking! He's going to be there, isn't he? I I uh Tell me! Look, okay, yes, but we just want the two of you to patch things up. Clearly you guys aren't going to patch things up yourselves, so... So you all decided to lie to me instead, tricking me into meeting with that mutt. We're worried about the both of you. Jude turns his attention towards me, staring daggers into my very soul. What about you? Did you know about this? Yes, I didn't think it was the best idea, but I guess that doesn't matter. Even the new guy, jeez. The car goes quiet once more. Elliot turns down a dirt road, and I can see we must be fairly close to the camping site. Stop the car. Jude, I don't think that... I said, stop the car. Elliot pulls the car to a stop, and Jude lets himself out, slamming the door behind him. Where you going? On a walk. I need to fucking think. Should... Should one of us go after him? Yeah, I'm on it. Quinn exits the car, leaving me alone with Elliot. Maybe I should go too. Then again, he looks pretty mad. It might be better to meet with Zoe first. Oh, Quinn and Jude. Sorry, Elliot. Let Zoe know we'll be there when we can. No worries, just make sure you stay in touch. We don't need y'all getting lost in the woods. Hopping out of the car, I move quickly to catch up with Quinn and Jude. Hey, wait up! After catching up to Quinn and Jude, I find myself gasping for air. I can't believe this. What? Like Zoe's never devised a plan to try and get you and Aiden to get along. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't care about that. I care that you lied about it. Damn it, Quinn! We came into this thing saying that no matter what, we'd be honest with one another. What's the fucking point if you don't have my back? Right. Like you're always so freaking honest. What the hell are you talking about? You're ashamed to tell others about your new job. I think we both know why, too. You've danced around it all summer. I looked it up, Jude. Sarabella, it's a gay club. I don't... Look, I get that you're probably not comfortable with dudes touching each other or whatever. I just... I want to know that being around it hasn't turned you off so much that you don't want to talk to me. What? Jude looks at Quinn slack-jawed, and even if I'd caught my breath by this point, I'd have no idea what to say. You... you just don't suddenly hate me, right? Where the shit is this coming from? Jude grabs Quinn by the arm and pulls him into a tight embrace. You're my... You're my best friend. I wouldn't care if you started fucking chairs. If that's your thing, that's your thing. Look, I know I've been in a shitty mood. This job has some crappy hours, but it pays really well. I don't talk about it because it really isn't worth talking about. Sorry, I guess I just have had a lot of negativity floating around lately. I've been trying not to let it get to me, but... Shit. I know I gotta clean things up with a mutt, just can't y'all let me stew in my anger for even a week. Quinn laughs at this, and I can feel the tension in the air getting looser. I still don't say anything, not wanting to interrupt this moment. All I want is for you to be more honest when this shit is gonna get sprung on me, you know? Right. This feels like the moment Quinn should be bringing up the truth about his black eye. He isn't saying anything, though. Do I really need to give him a push? Quinn, don't you think you should come clean about the other thing? What other thing? Seriously, Mason, now? There won't be a better time, and you literally just started hugging while reaffirming your friendship. I can tell by Quinn's expression that he's shocked and upset that I brought this up, but it's a chance to come completely clean that he can't let go to waste. 
Jude crooks his eyebrow at me before looking back down at the bunny that has already begun disengaging from their embrace. Well, first, I need to make this clear. It's not a big deal. So, I'll tell you. However, you have to promise not to flip out. Why do I get the feeling that I'm not going to like this? Quinn shakes nervously and looks at me. Well, I nodded him in encouragement. He can do this. Anyway, I, uh, remember that roommate I'd been complaining about before? That reptile asshole? Yeah. Quinn scratches the side of his face, trying to find the words. Jude looks at him, trying to figure out what he said, what he's saying, but then his face seems to widen in realization. Wait, did he? Did that prick fucking hit you? Please don't flip out. How do you expect me to feel? Some piece of shit assaulted you. I'm gonna kick his ass. That's what I'm going to... There's no need for that. What do you mean, no need? That monster's gonna keep treating Quinn like shit if we don't do something. We're already doing something. M Quinn moved into my room and Zoe's currently trying to file paperwork through the school. Ideally, we'll be able to get that dick expelled, but we should at least be able to get some kind of restraining order. Right. Like a restraining order has ever really stopped anyone. I didn't expect that guy to learn anything. Look, he sucks. I get it. But think about the kind of trouble we'd get in if we taught him the lesson you're talking about. What if he got banned from campus? What if he got pressed with some assault charges? That's the guy who should get charged with assault. Right, but what do you think the odds are that, that he'd get charged with assault if you went into his room and threw down? Jude glares at me with silence. Even if he doesn't want to admit it, he knows I'm right. Hey, it's okay. I'm fine now, and I won't be seeing that jerk again. Why'd you make up that door thing earlier, then? What do you think? You were ready to go charging back to campus fists a blazing. I wasn't... Yes, you were. I knew you better than that, and you know that. Jude starts grumbling, but Quinn simply laughs. Look, the sun's gonna be heading down soon. We should hurry up and head to the campsite. We can talk about this more later, alright? Jude doesn't say anything anymore. Jude doesn't say anything more. Instead, he just lumbers behind us quietly while we continue moving towards the intended site. Thankfully, by following the trail, we managed to find where Elliot had parked. Next to his truck, smoking a cigarette, is a large bull who I don't recognize. Ah, Jericho. Do either of you know who that is? Quinn leans towards me and starts whispering in my ear. That's Jericho, Aiden's bodyguard. Aiden has a bodyguard? Yeah, when you're loaded, you're bound to have whatever you want and need. He can basically buy whatever he wants. That includes people. Jude, you know that's rude. Besides, you know Jericho. It isn't like that. I'm not so sure. Looking back at the bovine, it becomes apparent that he is staring at me with stern eyes, watching me closely behind a thin cloud of tobacco smoke. Studying me, analyzing me, as if trying to determine if I'm some kind of threat, as if I'm some kind of predator. The way he looks at me, it actually makes my skin crawl. He doesn't look like the conversational type, and quite frankly, I'm more interested in reconvening with the others and walking far out of his line of sight. Walking up a slight hill, we're all met with a small campsite with several bags strewn about. I don't see Zoe or Aiden around, but I can see plain as day that Elliot has his round bottom in the air while rummaging about in some coolers. This could be a good opportunity to pull a fast one on a smooth feline. I just greet him normally. Hey, Elliot! The large panther quickly turns his head and locks eyes with us, a big smile stretching across his face. Glad you all decided to join us. I was beginning to get worried you might actually get lost out there. Nope, just had some bonding out in the woods. Jude grumbles and Elliot looks at him with concern. He pats the deer on the shoulder and the two seem to share a look that ends with Elliot smiling. So long as you all are okay, that's all that matters. Yep, we're one step closer to being one big happy family. Okay, seriously, what the fuck is that idiot wearing? I follow Jude's finger and find it pointing at Aiden in the distance. He's standing in a strange outfit while talking to Zoe. From this distance, it almost looks like one of those old scout uniforms, but that can't be the case. That'd be too ridiculous. I find myself holding back a bit of a laugh at the idea, while Quinn audibly snickers. Even Jude seems like he might enter a fit of laughter. Maybe it's his pajamas? As if. The guy's wearing a freaking neckerchief. Can I expect that you'll be teasing him about this? Mercilessly. If I'm gonna be here with him, I'm gonna enjoy it. At this moment, Zoe starts walking back towards the camp, leaving Aiden to continue staring off into the sky alone. Oh, hey guys! Glad you all made it here safe and sound. Zoe pulls me into a side hug while ruffling Quinn's hair and looking up at Jude. 
Sorry things are a bit of a mess right now. Still getting everything set up. If you guys don't mind helping out, I kind of need to borrow Mason for a minute. You need me for something? Yeah, we need to have a talk, and I need a break from... Well, anyway, if he'll come with me. So he grabs my arm, and while I'm not particularly keen on walking anywhere after having just been made it, after having just made it to the camp, I have no reason to really object. Following Zoe, we begin taking a short walk away from the camp. Along the way, we pass by Jericho, who's still smoking a cigarette by Elliot's truck. I feel his eyes following us as we cross his path. I'm not sure why I feel so nervous around him. I know he works for Aiden, so he can't be all that bad. Something about how he looks at me, though. It leaves me feeling a bit unnerved. I try shaking him from my thoughts, but my curiosity gets the better of me. So, Aiden's bodyguard Jericho. Does he know about us? How we're all... Psychics? Yeah, Jericho's psychic, too. Seriously? Yeah, he's a telepath. More specifically, he can read thoughts. It's why Aiden chose him to be his bodyguard. He can usually tell if someone is going to do him harm well before they act on it. Wait, then why isn't Jericho part of the whole group? He doesn't need it. What do you mean? God, where do I even begin? Everyone's in tune to their psychic abilities at a different wavelength. For some people, like Jericho, it's like turning on and off a light switch. You just focus really hard and it happens. People like that tend to not really need an extensive support group because they can blend in seamlessly with others. In other cases, like Gwen's, it just happens without warning, which can be dangerous, both to others and themselves. Even if I can't help them find a way to control their abilities better, I want to help them live with them, accept them, embrace them. This club was supposed to help, yet it's been two years and I've barely made any real progress. Zoe lets out a deep sigh. She stops walking for a moment and, takes, and takes to tugging lightly on her bangs. I have to confess something, Mason. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I don't know how to help them grow anymore, and with the time running out before I graduate, I just worry I might end up leaving them more soft than when I found them. What made you decide to do all this in the first place? It's a family business. My father is one of the heads of a large psychic syndicate, functioning to help, keeping, to help keep psychics safe as well as out of the public attention. How many of us are there? Easily thousands. It's our organization that we maintain secrecy. Is it like government run? Is it like a government run organization, or are we talking about a literal secret society? I'm being serious. So am I. I just want to make sure we've I've got all this straight. I don't really know. My dad doesn't exactly share a lot of the finite details with me. I can't imagine we've avoided government detection, but it's not like I've ever seen my dad talking to federal agents or anything. This is a lot of information to digest. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. So, basically, psychics have a secret society, and your dad works for them, and eventually, you will too. That's the gist. So, where do I come in? I'm, I'm sorry if I'm still a little doubtful, but I really don't think I'm psychic. It's okay if you don't believe me, but my eyes have never been wrong before. Everyone keeps saying Zoe's never been wrong, but I still don't exactly understand what her abilities even entail. So, what, do you have the psychic equivalent of Gadar or something? Heh, <laughs> not quite. You ever hear the phrase, the eyes are the windows to the soul? Well, in my case, I take that quite literally. There isn't really a name for it, but I've been calling it optic psychometry. I can look someone in the eyes and know everything about them. Where they're from, what kind of person they are, the works. Seriously? That's crazy! So you already know everything about him, about me? Nope, I don't really know anything about you, bar barring the vibe I get from you. For whatever reason, I can't seem to read people with minds at an elevated level. Wait, but it seemed like you knew I was psychic already when you decided to bust into my dorm room. That's because I did. You probably don't remember it since you were exhausted, but I was the one who gave you your room key. Thinking back, those last few hours of orientation are a bit of a blur. It's possible she's telling the truth. It was a really long flight, so I doubt anyone could blame me for being as tired as I was. I'll do what I can to help you figure out what your ability is, but I also need your help, too. And what do you mean? Well, whatever your ability is, it's clearly not affecting you negatively, so to be honest, you probably don't need to be part of this group. But I need your help. I feel like I've gotten soft on them, so I've become blind to some of their issues. She's hoping I'll have a fresh perspective. It makes sense. It can be easy to lose sight of things when you've been working at something for so long. How would you expect me to help? Honestly, I just need to be able to fill in whenever I can. Whenever I can. There's four of them, and problems arise often than you. Problems arise more often than you think. If you could go, if you could be the go-to guy and be there for one of them, it'd make it easier for you to support the others. That seems like a tall order when you put it that way. 
It's really not. Just be a friend, talk to them, listen to them, and help them when you can help them when you can see they need it. That's it? All she wants me to do is spend time with them? Zoe looks at me with an expression I can't place. Is she actually nervous that I won't want to be friends with them because I don't need to? Maybe I'm maybe I'm a weirdo. Maybe I should be running to the hills because of how this whole group seems to function. At this point, though, I can't see myself walking away. I'm invested, and if just being there is helpful, then I can't see the harm in that. Okay. Oh! Alright, guys, great place to end it. That has been a new episode of Psychic Connections. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!